Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to process an iPhone RAW file in Apple Photos. Yesterday I received an email from Frank L. Frank was telling me that he's doing a lot of iPhone photography and he asked me if I would consider doing some videos demonstrating how to process those RAW files in Apple Photos. And he suggested there are a lot of people out there doing this type of photography and Apple Photos is a very capable app. It could uh, process images very well. So. He kind of sold me on the idea of doing some videos, uh, but I'd like to hear from you as well in the comments below. Let me know, is this something you want me to continue? Would you like me to do more videos on processing images in Apple Photos, not only on a computer like I am today, but maybe on an iPhone or an iPad as well. Now, I'm going to give you just the very basics in this video, and we're going to just cover the the basic tools, uh, we're not going to get into more advanced features. Maybe we'll save that for another video if you're interested. Now I have four images in this album. You can see that the two on the end are raw. It says in the corner and the two in the middle are portrait. Um, the portrait images are not raw files. When you shoot in portrait mode on an iPhone, it's going to create an HEIC file. That's just a file type similar to JPEG. Um, many people say it's a more modern JPEG uh, because it could hold a lot more data than a regular JPEG and uh, it has better compression and less artifacts and, and stuff like that. So we're going to start out, we're going to take this raw file, this very first one here, and I'm just going to double click on it so that we could view it. And this is an unprocessed raw file from an iPhone. Uh, so we're going to go up here to the top and we're just going to go over here to edit. So we're going to click on edit. And when you do that, a bunch of tools open up on the right hand side. And you pretty much could go in order uh, from top to bottom, but if you need to, you could jump around as well. Now we're going to start right at the top with light. I'll open that up. And first of all, when you open it up, it just opens up this little like slider at the top, which kind of gives you a different kind of look of light that you could do that if you want. Um, or if you prefer, let me reset it. You can click on this little circular arrow there. You could just get an auto light adjustment by clicking right there. I'll reset again. Or if you prefer, you could roll open all the sliders that are in the light adjustments by clicking on this little uh, arrow and then we have all these different adjustments here. Now first of all as you move from top to bottom you have brilliance. Brilliance just you can see how it kind of affects the tones in the image and you could move it until you get some you know satisfying tones to you. There's really no like specific mechanical mathematical uh, way I could tell you to adjust brilliance just move it till it looks good to you exposure is as it suggests it will increase or decrease the exposure value of your image so if you have an image that is a little bright or a little dark and you need to adjust the exposure just move that slider highlights you could uh, make the highlights brighter or bring the highlights in a little bit now on this image uh, the yellow parts of the sleeve um, are almost blown out. You can see there's not a lot of detail in there. And if I bring down highlights a little bit, I'm starting to get some of the detail back in some of those uh, bright yellow parts of the flower. Now shadows, uh, you could open those up, make them brighter or darker. I kind of like them brighter. You can see how it's bringing out the center of the flower. Now brightness is similar to exposure in that if you move it to the right, it seems like the entire image gets brighter, or if you move it to the left, the entire image gets darker. Unlike exposure though, when you move it, it won't clip uh, either the highlights or shadows. Meaning if I take exposure and I move it to the right, I could start to clip. That means totally blow up the highlights. If I move it, blow out the highlights. If I move it to the left, I could start to crush the shadows. And um, that, of course, isn't something you want to do. Brightness, on the other hand, will bring it towards and up to where, in this case, if I'm moving it to the right, it's going to clip the highlights, but it won't clip them. If I go to the left, it will bring it to the point where it's about to crush the shadows, but
but it isn't crushing the shadows. So brilliant brightness might be a better choice on some images. Now, if you have a, a slider, any slider in Apple Photos and you want to reset it, just double click right on the slider and you'll reset it back to its default position. Now with brightness, I think I'll just kind of move it to the right a little bit, add a little bit of contrast. Now black point is um, in an image, most often we'd like to have an absolute black in there. And with this, you could move this to the right and it will just make the blacks a little blacker. If you move it to the left, you're gonna open up those uh, darker shades. So the blacks will get a little brighter. So it's really down to taste. I'm gonna move that to the right. I'm going to uh, go back to brightness, kind of move this around a little bit. So you could come in, so you see, once you adjust, let's say I, I did my highlights to a point and then I put brightness up, well, it's kind of undoing some of what I did with the highlights, right? So you could kind of jump around and, and get, um, get the settings the way you like it. So this is light, so we've done that. If you'd like to see a before or after in the top right hand corner or top left hand corner, if you click here and hold with the left mouse button, there's before, let go, and there's after. Before, after. All right, so we're done with light. I'm going to close that down and we're going to go to color. And again, similar to light, we have this kind of overall slider here, which just gives you different looks. I'll undo that. You also could hit the auto button if you prefer. I'll undo that. Or you could roll open the sliders that are in the color adjustments by clicking there. You can see there's only three, saturation, vibrance, and cast. We'll start at the bottom. If your image has a color cast, it's got a bluish color cast or a greenish color cast or something, this will help you remove it. So you would just move this to remove the color cast. This specific image doesn't have one, so I don't need to do it. Now the next two, vibrance and saturation. Vibrance... Um, will kind of enhance the tones in the image, but it won't saturate anything. It just will bring things just about to saturation, but won't oversaturate anything. If you bring it down, it will kind of suck the color out of the image, but it won't bring it all the way to a black and white image, as you could see. Whereas saturation, um, if I move that to the right, you'll start to saturate and even oversaturate colors in some scenes. Not really oversaturating anything here. If I move it to the left and all the way down, I'll get a black and white image. So saturation more or less affects every single pixel equally. Uh, it's going to just increase the saturation of every pixel equally or decrease the saturation of every pixel equally. Vibrance on the other end doesn't. It doesn't do as much to the reds. So if you have a person in the shot and you don't want to affect their skin tone adversely, but you want to make their clothes more colorful, Vibrance is the slider to use. Now in this image, I think Vibrance looks pretty good on this image, so I'm just gonna move that up. So there is color. Now if you want to process a black and white image, you can so, uh, do so here. Again, you could roll open the adjustments here, and you could see that you could just create a black and white image with the slider at the top, hit auto if you prefer, um, or you could come in with the individual sliders. You could see as soon as I touch one, it creates a black and white image. I'm just going to undo that because I do not want a black and white image for this shot. If I had something I wanted to remove, um, for example, if there was a sensor spot or if it was a, pi a picture of a person and they had maybe a pimple, I wanted to remove it. This is where this retouch brush comes in. There is nothing here I want to use that on, so we'll uh, bypass that. Red eye removal, if you used flash on a person and they have like those red glowing eyes, you could remove it with that. Again, we could save those for um, future videos if you would like me to continue with a series of Apple Photo videos. Let me know again in the description below or in the comments below. Uh, white balance, white balance is fine on this, nothing to do there. Curves levels are kind of more high level adjustments. Uh, this image doesn't need any adjusting here with curves or levels. But again, this might be something that um, I could do in the future. Maybe I could move, kind of like to make it just a little bit more kind of darker in the dark areas with levels. So you could see how this left-hand side affects the shadows. This far right-hand side will affect the highlights. And then in between, we have mid-tone sliders that will affect mid-tones of the image. Uh, so 
that is levels. Again, we could get into that a little more uh, in future videos if you'd like me to. Definition is just the kind of the overall kind of definition. You could see how it affects tone and color as I move it to the right. Contrast makes it a little more contrasty as I go to the right. So we could kind of maybe just bump that up just a tiny bit. Selective color, this is HSL, so that's U saturation and luminance for different colors. So if you want to affect just the reds or just the blues, you could do that here. Uh, but in this image here, I like the colors as it is now. But if I wanted to, like I could go to yellow, let's say, and I could affect just the yellow of um, the saturation of the yellows. Or the luminance values of just the yellows, make them brighter or make them darker, like that. But again, in this one, I don't think I'm going to do anything with selective color. Noise reduction. Uh, what you could do is you could zoom in. You could hit Command Plus on your Mac a couple times, and even like twice it let me. And then you could look and see if there's noise, and there really isn't. So I'm going to hit Command Minus a couple times to zoom back out. And uh, so I really don't have to do anything with noise. Sharpen again. Uh, you could hit Command Plus again to sharpen. I would recommend kind of zoom in and kind of drag it around. I want to kind of keep it sharp right in the middle. So we'll move that up. You can see how it's sharpening that center part, uh, the edges, move it around. More I move it to the right, the sharper it gets. More I move it to the left, the less sharp it is. And fall off, you can do and see how that works. That's a little bit like masking. So it's going to, on these areas that don't have any defined edges, when you move fall off to the right, it won't sharpen that or try to sharpen that. So I think that looks pretty good. We'll hit Command Minus a couple times to zoom it back out. So that looks pretty good. And I think I'll add a vignette. Uh, if you move to the right, you'll get a dark vignette. If you move to the left, you get a white vignette. I'm going to move to the right, get a darker vignette. I'm going to affect the radius and I'm going to affect the softness. And pull it out from the middle a little bit. I think that looks pretty good, just like that. So let's do another before. After we go to the top left, hold the left mouse button in. There's before. And there's after. There's before. And there's after. Now when you're done with your editing, just click up here, done. Okay. And if you want to go back to see your images, just go over here. Now I'm just going to show you something real quick on a portrait image. Uh, image shot in portrait mode. So I'll double click on this and we'll go to edit. Now you'll get all the same controls over on the right, but what you'll also see down here at the bottom, you can see it's in portrait mode. If I turn off portrait mode by clicking on this, you could see how all that background all of a sudden became in focus, right? So there's portrait mode. And then you have different things you could do to the background, like you could get a studio light on there. Uh, this, whatever that is, if I hover, maybe it'll show me, but it's not. Um, this. So you could just page through these, see what it looks like. I just like that first one. Um, also, when you're in portrait mode up here, you have depth of field you could affect. So if that's just a little bit too blurry in the background, you could affect it with the depth of field slider right there. And then otherwise, you could do your processing uh, just like I did on the raw file, uh, just by uh, going through the sliders on the right-hand side. And when you're done, of course, then you could hit done on the right. So these are just the very basics to get you started using uh, Apple Photos. Again, if this is something um, that you'd want to see more of, let me know in the comments below. And I'd like to thank everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>